Okay, so now we will just talk about one, at least one physical interpretation of the line integral. Okay, for the past thing, two lessons we've been just integrating, integrating, integrating. Really do not know what we are integrating, but now we will see what it is. Okay, first recall some physics, if you may, that there's a constant vector that goes in this direction over here. Okay, so let's just say there's a box that is moving in that direction. Okay, and then there's a force that's applied to the box. Okay, but the, the force may not exactly be in that direction, it could be in another direction. So let's just say that the force applied to the box is like this, force F and force D. So the box is moving in, the, in that direction, okay, but the force applied is force F, it's going that way, okay. But however, if you were to notice that force F has a component like this and a component like this, okay, no, no, no surprise about that, okay. And there's only, only part or only sum of force F is really used to push the box in that direction or the work done on the box by force F is a certain calculation and that as we, we would know is F dots with D okay at the point of time at the point of time as the box is moving in a constant direction like that. Now, it, it needs to be the dot product, okay, because like I said, only part of the force F is moving in the direction of the D, okay? The work done on the box by force F, okay? So this is what the dot product means, or at least an interpretation of the dot product is the work done by a certain force F as the box is moved in that direction, direction D. However, this is not physics, right? This is mathematics, okay? We, we don't, we use what, what we know, we use only a bit of what we know and we try to put in all the numbers as much as possible to get a bigger picture. So, what are we going to use? We are just going to use this simple principle, the force on, on a box, okay, in a certain direction D, okay, is a force F on a box that moves in a certain direction D is F dot with D. So, how will we um, you, um, imply that? Okay, so it would start like this okay we will draw a thing over here like this the coordinate axis and got a curve as always it goes like that position vector r okay r t let's just say and that's the curve that we have okay and then there's the position vector so now remember the line integral the line integral we would need a vector field and the position vector where well, we have the position vector and the vector field is just somewhere around here okay so Coming from that principle, okay, what we want to do, okay, or what we're going to make the, the switch or the, the parallel is we got a certain point on the curve here like this, okay, and obviously the vector field, okay, when the point is somewhere in the space, okay, is going to experience a force, right? The force is created by the vector field. Okay, so I'm just going to take, for example, the force is like that, force F, okay, knowing that the vector field is everywhere. Okay, and we got point A and we got point B. So now, as opposed of thinking a box, we will think as a point, okay? A point on a curve. We all, I mean, we're in three-dimensional space. We don't care about the, the physical or the real-world implications for now. We're dealing with the mathematics, okay? And the mathematics, we will represent that as a point on the curve, okay? And now, the point on the curve, obviously, is going to travel in a certain direction, correct? It's traveling in the direction of the curve here like that, uh, defined by R. So, what we define, or what we want to find is really the work done by the force on the certain point. Now, as we take into account that the point is going to travel from A to B, like that, our target is to find the work done by, or the total work done, by the variable force, okay? This is where things get a bit more exciting for maths, that is. Because the force is variable, as, as the point moves over here, the, the force is, is something else, you know, it could be pointed here, it doesn't have to be in the same direction. So we want to find the total work done by the vector field that moves the point from A all the way to B over here. And that is what the light integral attempts to explain. Now, at a certain point, okay, remember that we're dealing all, you know, all variables here. At a certain point, the force experience, let's just say, is F, okay? Yes, it's a force generated by the vector field. Now, what is the direction D? Remember, we've got the box over here, and D is in the direction of where the box is moving. So, it would seem that for over here, the direction that the point is moving is the tangent vector, right? Just have to think about that. The points over here is going to have to move somewhere, and it's moving 
along the tangent vector. The tangent vector is something like this over here, okay? And it's R dash, R dash T. So at that certain point, you see the force is, is varying as the point moves along the curve, but at that certain point, we can calculate the work done by the, the force generated by the vector field on the point as it moves along the curve, okay? And that would be F dot with first derivative of t because, sorry, the first derivative of r because the first derivative of r tells us where the point is moving, the direction the point is moving at that particular time, okay? So let's just say that this is the work done at a certain point. The point is now here like that, okay? x, t, y, t, and z, t, okay? And using your, your taking limits, or sorry, your, your principle of continuity, when we want to find the work done, the total work done as the point moved from here to here, we would sum the individual points, right? We would sum the individual points like that, okay? We would take the sum of the individual points like that, okay? Not to really add too much complications to the, to the calculation, and that will give us integrate, or the line integral, okay, of the curve C, okay, the curve C, and the individual forces generated by the vector field, okay, F dot with the direction is traveling at a certain point, which is the R, sorry, for the derivative of R, okay, and we'll integrate that with respect to T because T is varying from A to B, okay, and we can just say um, from a to B, okay, taking the line integral, and this would give us exactly our first definition of the line integral, okay, which is equals to the total work done by vector field F, okay, uh, yeah, total work done by vector field F to move a point from A to B. And there you have it. The definition or at least the physical interpretation of the line integral. Okay, and that's the, the sum is the is the line integral is the total work done by the vector field. You see the vector field is pushing the point, right? It's pushing the point along the curve. So it's doing work to the to the point. It's pushing the point along the curve. And as we know from the physics principle, okay, that at any one point this the work done is F dot with the, the first derivative of R, the direction in which the point is moving. That is where the, the first derivative of R comes, comes inside. And then we, we sum that, take the integral, and then that is what they have total work done by the vector field from a point A to B. Okay? And I mean, now that you know what it is, you should see why I have the following results. I'm going to show them without any proof because due to lack of time, but they are, they are pretty self explanatory, okay? The line integral of the two vector fields, okay, dr is equal to the individual one, okay? So you got f dr plus g dr, okay? So if you got two vector fields, they add them up together, you want to take the line integral of the two on the curve over the curve, you can split them up, okay? Just basically summing up the, the individual forces. Then you got the, the one that is the constant, or yeah, the scalar multiple, which let's just say alpha. Okay, you can bring that out, not a problem at all, okay? And last one, perhaps the more interesting one, would be the line integral of F over the curve C is equal to negative, the line integral of negative C of F over the curve, sorry, over the curve negative C. Okay, now this again, again emphasizes that direction is important for later topic called green steering, you see? If I want to calculate the force or the work done by the force of the point that moves from here to here, it's moving in a certain way, okay? It's moving in a certain way. Now, if I want to calculate that I'm going backwards at the curve, see, negative C will simply be the same curve, but I'm just traveling backwards like this, okay? The force or the work done is going to be negative of that, okay? Because direction is important. Direction is important. It's going to be negative of that. So, I would just simply have to take the negative of of that value for them to be equal. Or another way that you can take a look at it, if you're gonna integrate the other way, or if you wanna switch the signs, okay? If you wanna make it a minus sign, then you need to integrate on the other the, the other way, okay? Negative C, move from here to here. So if I wanna somehow put a, a C inside there, 
okay oh sorry negative inside there i need to integrate the other way okay just like it's is a uh, parallel to this one over here okay which many of you would probably understand all right yeah the integrate the integral from a to b is negative if you go backwards okay yeah it's negative if you go backwards so just like how we want to introduce a negative sign you need to go the other way okay and there you have it the few rules okay because coming up i hope you are ready green still we're gonna spend a lot of time on it because it's one of the big ones okay perhaps even forms i think most of the chapter so i hope you stay in tune okay